right, welcome everybody. It is uh, back to the Overtime Series with Athletic Director Roman Banks, a closer look at Jaguar Athletics. Hi everybody, I'm Chris Powers. That's the man, Coach Banks. How you doing, Athletic back Director? Back in the house. We've been gone That's it. for a little bit, but we're back how was in the house. Your, how was your holidays? Oh, great. You know, got a chance to, to reflect a little bit. Mm -hmm. You know, the athletic staff had a chance to come together, have a uh, Cup Christmas party, New Year's Eve yeah. party, there's a couple of things, and so it's been good. Come back energized and ready to rock and roll. That's exactly, and that was a big disappointment for me. I missed the uh, Christmas party for Southern because I was flying that way to see my family in California that very day, and I, I hated missing it because yeah. you and your lovely wife did a very good job of hosting us uh, for the Thanksgiving at your home. And, and you know what I love about Southern University, and a lot of coaches say that too, Coach, I gotta give them credit, man. It's like a family atmosphere. Well, I just believe we spend so much time together and, and for us to move forward, I believe in unity. And so, you know, in athletics, you more with the staff more than you really are right. at home. And so that's always been my leadership style to make us family oriented. And I think when you when you together on one accord, you can get a lot accomplished. And so uh, that's always been my leadership style. I, I'm thankful for everybody in the athletic department. Uh, that live up to that status what we're trying to build and uh, I look forward to a great 2020. Yes indeed. Hard to believe already. 2020. I thought we'd be flying around in spaceships now. I thought we'd be floating on the basketball court. I'll be able to slam dunk 20 foot goals. Yeah, yeah. Can't happen. I don't want it to move that fast. Slow down. <laughs> Me neither. I'm just catching up with technology right now. <laughs> Me neither coach. I'm with you. Uh, obviously great exposure for the Southern University with the uh, Human Jukebox being at the Rose Bowl Parade, National TV on ABC, and a couple of other affiliates too had them too. But it was huge for having that big exposure for Southern. Yeah, no question about it. Uh, the Human Jukebox, the baddest band in the yep. land, and uh, they proved that every time they step out there on a, on a Saturday, every time they go to a parade, every time they perform at a concert. Uh, and they got a chance, I think, to play at the Lakers game as well. That's right. So uh, it's very rewarding when you have someone. And we got a great leader uh, in, uh, in, in Kendrick. He does a great job for us. And so we're excited about him. And, and you know what? Uh, you know, I tell him we go hand in hand. You know, we cannot do an athletics without that brand other band. And I think he would say the same thing. And so it has been a great partnership us and, and uh, you know Taylor do, does a great job with his band mm -hmm. and his leadership style and so uh, you know we look forward to rocking the basketball games here right you know our home games and uh, doing a little bit more uh, of, of showing up at volleyball games and other games uh, we even talked about baseball so we're excited about that no question and then obviously now spring sports start uh, you've got uh, women's basketball and the men's basketball women's basketball uh, they started, and uh, Carlos Funch is coming off a very big year last year, two-time defending uh, regular season SWAC champions. Of course, the last year they won the SWAC tournament title. So they're... Uh, we're looking for three. That's it. <laughs> that's, that's three, that's Put a lot three of pressure people. on. We're looking for three. But uh, no question at the end of the day, I think that, you know, uh, with his leadership and his team, I know he lost some seniors that were, that were key and it's hard to replace them. And you know, when you've been there, you have mm -hmm. student athletes that's been there before, it take a little pressure off you as a coach. But uh, obviously I think he's gonna be right there in the hunt again with his young team. And you know, I'm always looking at the roster and, and, and evaluating. And obviously I think that he has this ball club in shape for the next two or three years. No question about that. And of course, uh, some big games coming up. Uh, the next home game is going to be on the 25th. Uh, we'll be playing at the F.G. Clark Activity Center on that Saturday and Sunday, and Valley and UAPB make their trip in. Yeah, no question about it. And I, I, I urge everybody to go to our website and, and stay close alert to our social media uh, because we have a lot of engagement for fans during our basketball games. And uh, I know that we have break night and, and, and YMCA night, and I know that we have a lot of things that's coming, church night's coming soon. Uh, we're bringing back our legends during those games. We have different... Uh, spaghetti dinners for supporters and and we have a array of things that uh, that that staff uh, that social media staff and that basketball staff do a good job of putting together so I'm excited about uh, what's to take place obviously you know we are rewarding people for being season book holders and we having a lot of things uh, for them to say thank you so uh, I'm excited about what's to come and we had a great a great uh, a great fan base against Gremlin. Yep. Uh, they were flowing up to the top, and um, I thought for a championship game, we started the games early on Monday night, and I thought that uh, all of Southern Lab came and, and filled the place. And you know, we've been, we've been inviting two different bands in from different schools, right. and our band out there. So 
you know, it's a lot to come, and uh, I'm excited. We got a lot on the agenda, and asking people to stay stay tuned to what we're doing in athletics. Yeah, it's it's a lot of fun, no question about that. By the way. Uh, Arkansas Pine Bluff and Mississippi Valley State's the road games we played this weekend and then on Monday we'll play against Alabama and they're always tough Alabama State and of course Alabama A&M Alabama State's on that Saturday and I know when Alabama State coach Frida and, 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 and Southern University when they get together oh yeah it's, it's a always a classic game you know that that's a that's a team traditionally on the women's side and in the men's side right. that's always in the hunt and uh, we know that Southern University and, and Alabama State have had some huge yeah. rivalry, especially on the ladies' side. And, uh, and, and, I, and I suspect the same thing. Uh, that won't change. I had opportunity to see her get inducted to the SWAC Hall of Fame um, during the uh, Celebration Bowl. And, and also Georgia Ivory, for that fact, for the men at UAPB. And um, I just know that we have some people coming as well that's a part of Southern University. So that speaks volumes how people think about you being uh, chosen to those classes, and so I'm excited about that. Along with, along with Harry Carl, Michael, come to oh, think about it. Oh wow, cool, cool deal. Uh, some interesting things, of course, track and field opening meet, uh, the Purple Invitational held at LSU. We got some pictures for that right here. We want to show you. Uh, those are some uh, nice pictures of the track and field. I think is going to have a very good spring this year, as you can see right there. They're right there in competition. That's a close, close mark right there, and I believe that's a Louisiana Lafayette yes. uh, player that he's with right there. And there's obviously. Uh, the women's track team doing well. And so we had a chance to go by. We had a lot going on all campus, uh, basketball games and preparing. But, uh, you know, a lot of the staff went over and, and was able to get a chance to view our track team. But that's another sport that I'm excited about that I think that year by year we, we have continued to get better. And I think Coach White is doing a good job. And uh, I'm just looking forward to till pretty soon when we'll be hosting our own track meets. Yeah, no question about that. I can't wait for that either. And then we've got, speaking of meet, we've got a meet coming up with the University of Houston. It'll be on Friday, January 17th. Here's the schedule right here that we're going to have uh, this uh, uh, format for you right here. There's the schedule as we speak. So lots of great things going on here for the track team over in Houston. I think a lot of people, you know, you, you, you think about fall and you think about football because that's every Saturday, everybody conversion at one time. But this, the springtime is definitely the most busiest time of the year as it relates to different sports competing in their areas. And so that keep us pretty busy as it relates to our athletic department. And, and as championship go, it just eat up all summer. That's so it. we don't mind that because that means that we're winning. That's exactly right. No question about that. All right, when we come back, we're talking uh, women's basketball. Coach Carlos Funch is going to join us coming up right here next as we continue. It's the overtime he's series. He's going to talk about how you're going to three-peat. That's right, three-peat. <laughs> he, he, put, he, put, he put the giggity on you, Coach. You oh, know, we just out. gave him rings at the game, uh -oh, so I'm looking, forward, right. I'm looking forward to going and getting look some Look out. We're we'll back in a moment right here at Pelican Sports TV. Are you interested in a college major with numerous career opportunities? Look no further than the Southern University College of Agricultural, Family, and Consumer Sciences. Agriculture is more than working on a farm. Our students are gaining hands-on experience and conducting cutting-edge research in the areas of agricultural sciences, family and consumer sciences, and urban forestry and natural resources. Our students also participate in internships and travel to national conferences. Our student organizations include students from diverse backgrounds with close bonds. These organizations provide our students with leadership and personal development skills needed to help them gain employment with top industry leaders. If you're not sure what you want to major in at Southern University, I encourage you to try AG. For more information about the College of Agricultural, Family, and Consumer Sciences, visit our website at www.suagcenter.com or call 225-771-2242. We're a nation of hardworking Americans, and businesses will always be the lifeline of this great country. As a business owner, you understand the importance of your reputation. In times of uncertainty, you need a real lawyer who's serious about protecting you and your business. You need a problem solver. You need the law firm of Clayton & Fouget. Tony Clayton is a proven trial lawyer. He'll defend you and your business to the fullest extent of the law. Protect your investment and call the law firm of Clayton & Fouget today. It's game day. A day that should be spent in the living room, not the kitchen. So next game, you just worry about the score. 
because we've got the food covered. With hand battered, cooked to order, always fresh, never ever frozen chicken fingers, craveable cane sauce, crispy crinkle cut fries, and jugs of freshly made tea and lemonade. Raisin Cane's Chicken Fingers, one love. Official Chicken of Southern University. Woo! <laughs> Our Lady of the Lake is pleased to have so many Southern University graduates as part of our growing healthcare family. They are difference makers, caring for patients, leading teams and serving our neighbors. A tradition of excellence, a commitment to service, and a love for our community. Our Lady of the Lake and Southern University, together, a winning team. So, School Board's Restaurant, as we have an uh, overtime series with Athletic Director Roman Banks, a closer look at Jaguar Athletics, and uh, we've got uh, Coach Carlos Funches with us right Chris? now. How you doing, Chris? How you doing? Coach of the uh, women's basketball team. Uh, Coach, uh, obviously, uh, you're off to a 2-2 two and two start. I've watched the Grambling game. I did the play-by-play -play for the Grambling game. Coach, that was just one of the most almost flawless games. Now, I know you watch it on game film, and you probably yeah. saw this and that. Coach, you shot well from the uh, field. 81-57 was the final score in that ball game. Uh, Southern University shot very well from the field. I uh, shot 60% from the field, in fact, for the total ball game. And uh, also 47% from downtown. Right. Free throw line, you were at 70% as well. Not a lot of turnovers in that ball game. It was crisp. Everything flowing fine that Grambling game. Well, Chris, we probably should have saved some of those shots. For <laughs> <laughs> and that happens. But and I know you're going to the Jackson State game, but for that Grambling game, it was big to get that victory, uh, you know, in, in, in our first home game. Right, it was. I thought the young ladies came out, they were engaged in what we were supposed to be doing and, and did a great job. You know, we've struggled shooting the ball at times this year, but when we've been on, they've done a tremendous job for us. Yeah, no question about that. A Lyric Scott still has that motor running, and I know she's every coach's dream. She might not score tons of points all the time and that first ball game she scored 21 points in the Grambling game right. so she did very well in that game but I mean her motor is always running she's either diving for the loose balls she's never just standing there watching the play well you know one thing as a coach you want to know what you're going to get out of a player each and every day and I know she's going to bring that energy she's going to give us hundred percent whether she's making shots or not like you said she's going to give us hundred percent on the defensive end rebounding I mean she's a multi-talented player and also, Jaden Towner was money from downtown, too, in that ball game, and she was good from anywhere in the outside. Jaden has really been shooting the ball well. Uh, we all struggled a little bit Monday, yeah. but uh, prior to that, I mean, the previous three games, we were shooting the ball extremely well uh, going into the Jackson game. So hopefully we can get back to our stride and start and have a good shooting night at Pine Bluff. And Brittany Rose has such a great uh, follow-through. And, you know, but she's streaky. Sometimes she starts off bad, she's going to end up bad. And if she starts off good, she's going to end up good. She's got right. a, just a great form when she shoots the ball. I mean, she can shoot the basketball with the best mm -hmm. of them. Sometimes her footwork is not the greatest, and that might cause a shot to be a little bit off. But uh, when she's on, I mean, she's capable of scoring 25 or 30 points. Yeah, no question about that. And obviously, she is the leading uh, uh, scorer on the team. Uh, but uh, all right, now, M Monday against Jackson State. And, Coach, everybody has that kind of game. There's no question about that. And 72-51 final score. Couldn't get anything to fall under the bucket or even outside the bucket. And that's just one of those games. That's one of those games. But when you're having a game like that, defensively, you have to turn up your energy and your yeah. intensity and try to make up for it on the defensive end, maybe get some offensive rebounds, get some easy buckets in transition, and try to, try to score points or generate points. That's what I call it. And uh, I thought we let our 
uh, uh, lack of hitting shots affect us on the offense, on, on the defensive end. So you can't let that happen when you're not knocking down shots. No, no question about that. So as you right now, you've got four games in conference under your belt. How do you feel about your basketball team from this point? Well, I think we're making a lot of progress. We had a couple of kids that admit some time. Uh, Kayla Watson, she's kind of finding her groove. And I think we can play 12 deep, sometimes 13, you know, depending on what the other team is doing. But I think we have a lot of kids that can help our team. And when we sub and go to the bench, it's not a drop off in talent. Yes. You know, as a matter of fact, we have some kids coming off the bench that can do certain things, you know, better than the starters do. Yeah, and, and I like that too when you're doing it's almost like a hockey game when you have substitutes. You got four players coming in at one time. Right, right. And not the one or two players coming in at one. You know. Yeah, I mean, you know, we play like that. We practice like that. We want to speed the game up, and we have a lot of kids that can do a lot of different things. So, you know, I've tried to play them all. Uh, obviously, this league is always it's up for grabs. Uh, Jackson State leads it at four and zero. Yeah. The, the Tigers did look good on, uh, on, on Monday, no question about that. Texas Southern looks good. They're 3-0 in the conference. But then after that, Alcorn State 2-1, uh, UAPB 2-1, which we're, we're going to be facing on Saturday. Right. I mean, it's going to be a battle. You know, any night in the conference, any team is capable of beating another team. So you have to be ready to go. And one thing about us, with us being the, the two-time defending champions, I mean, we have a bullseye on our chest. So right. they're coming to get you every night. And then, of course, Valley's after that. Uh, right. And they had a big win uh, the first game. So, I mean, it's going to be a battle every night. So we just got to be ready to play and uh, go out and play Southern University women's basketball. No question about that. And then, of course, I mean, now, now the Bulls eye on your back, but is there pressure now from the team? Is, do you see ever pressure on your team like, okay, well, we want, we're used to winning and we're not doing it right now? Well, not necessarily. I look at it. Uh, try to break it down play by play. You want to go out and execute. That's what good teams do. And they don't wait till game time. They don't look at going on a two game run. They do it play by play and that starts in practice. And uh, try to execute on the offensive end as well as the defensive end. So, you know, that's what builds, builds uh, a tradition of winning. Going out and competing every day. So you've seen Grambling State, you've seen Texas uh, Southern, you've seen Purview u and m Right now, only four, the four teams that you've seen, is there any team that you look at so far and say, I don't think we can compete with them? No, no, no. I think we can beat anybody mm -hmm. in the league. I do too. If we come out and, and play solid basketball and compete every play. But you have to do the little things and play fundamentally sound, you know, if you want to be a, a winning team. And your defense, I mean, is... I mean, you do that full court press defense, and that's yeah. that's pretty rough. I'm looking at some of them. I was doing the PA for that game, for the, for the Jackson State game, and still, you guys were, I mean, getting down there real hard, and, and it was tough getting across the half court line. Well, like I said, we have a lot of depth, so we can apply pressure and go to our bench, and it's not a drop off. So, you know, that's one reason I love to press because we can. Uh, somebody's gonna get tired, so you just rotate one out and try to wear the other team down. How do you feel about your bigs this year? Uh, first of all, Raven White, number 44. I think when she gets it, she's going to be very good. She's going to be an excellent player. Uh, she's been in foul trouble the last few games. But she's learning uh, every day. And she's an extremely hard worker. So, you know, the best is yet to come with her. And Sianra McGee, is just, she's, so, she's, so, she's got so much spread to her. I mean, Lance. she's 6'3". She's yeah. I mean, she's one of the bigger girls in the conference. And she's really developing an uh, offensive game. Defensively, we need her to play big, you know, on the on the boards as well. And you know, another one I like a lot who handles the ball very well, number four Fleming. Oh yeah, she's Chloe good. Fleming, she's good. Chloe, Chloe is going to be a heck of a player. Mm -hmm. I mean, all our freshmen are, go are really good players, and you know, I think that the best is yet to come with all of them. No question about that. Well, coach, good luck. Thank you. Uh, Chris. Big luck this weekend, UAPB, and then Mississippi Valley State on Monday. Right on. And then back here against Alabama State. Does That's Coach right. Frieda ever get you nervous oh, no, on the other no. side? She's, she's a championship coach, so Woo! you just got to have your team ready to go. I'm doing play-by-play, play and I'm kind of like bagging off. Man. <laughs> <laughs> she can get intense. She's really a nice lady. Yeah, I, 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 I can see that. I can see that. All right, we come back. We're talking more right here as, of course, Overtime Series with Athletic Director Roman Banks, a closer look at Jaguar Athletics. Back in a moment right here from Pelican Sports TV. <laughs> Thank you, Coach. All right. Road trip.
trips just got a whole lot easier. The 2018 Nissan Rogue. Now with Nissan Intelligent Mobility, featuring technologies like available ProPilot Assist, which helps keep an eye on the road ahead and helps you stay centered while you're turning this lane into memory lane. Get to Nissan, proud supporter of college athletics. Care South offers a wide range of comprehensive medical, behavioral health, and dental services. On behalf of the staff and board of directors, we want to thank the Parish of Ascension, East Baton Rouge, and Iberville for allowing us to serve you. Come out to any of our locations where family is serving families. I can still remember Charlotte's first day of kindergarten like it was yesterday. Now, she's heading off to college. So how are you feeling? I'm nervous. I'm also really excited. You know you're the first McKernan to not go to LSU in decades. <laughs> Promise me this, you'll wear purple and gold at all the UT <laughs> football games. Dad. Letting go isn't easy, especially for this Louisiana dad, but our children know family is always there for them. Just like when our clients come to us for help, they'll always be part of the Get Gordon family. We want to be your lawyers for life. Call 888-8888. Preparing a meal, it's a lot like preparing for a game. It involves hard work, the right plan, and attention to detail. Great food, that's our passion. A taste of Louisiana, handcrafted from scratch. Walk-ons, because everyone needs a little playing time. Home, away, any game day. At Walk-Ons, we'll help you do game day right. What's the most important aspect of event hosting? Location. This is something the Bell knew from day one. That's why we're located in downtown Baton Rouge, across from the convention center, close to LSU, and right by the river. So with a friendly staff, award-winning cuisine, and a massive conference center of 10 rooms and 24,000 square feet capable of fitting more than 2,000 guests, what we offer is just as important as where we are. All right, welcome back, everybody. And uh, we're talking right here, Jaguar Athletics, uh, Southern University, and overtime series with Athletic Director Roman Banks, a closer look at Jaguar Athletics. And right here, we're talking volleyball. How you doing, Coach? I'm great. How are you, Chris? Coach Vanessa Jacobs right here. And I'll tell you again, I, I, I can't say this enough. I, I can't wait to go to more games and, and, and go to all the home games uh, when you have it next season. It's such a fun atmosphere. Not only the players and the action itself, but the fans were really getting into that yeah, game. They did a very good job for us. The Jaguar Nation's always been amazing. Yeah, and it was loud in there and stuff like that. And coach, you're getting to that level. You're start, you've already brought that volleyball level. And you can see it coming up. And uh, fourth in the tournament last year. Yeah. Fourth seed, and then now we got about five seniors on the on the on the team now. And I wanted to ask you about that. Now for football, you got to look for defensive backs and particularly quarterbacks. Okay, look, safeties are different. Cornerbacks are different. Linebackers, all that kind of good stuff. So when you go out recruiting, you got to look for those position players. How is it in volleyball? I know there's different positions or what have you, left side hitter, right side hitter, and all that defense player and all that. Mm -hmm. How is it? Do you have to go by positions or by players when you? We definitely go by positions. Um, right now, we're looking for two outside hitters and a middle blocker. We lost Arabella Hall, who was all tournament uh, for SWAC, and she was a big force for us. So we need somebody to help replace her. We definitely have three middle blockers right now, and they're going to battle over the spring. We are going to work very hard, um, and then we're just going to recruit another middle blocker that's going to come in and help you know, break the monotony of the spring training and try to win a starting position. Wow, and where do you look at as far as these athletes go like you know texas and louisiana for football is big recruiting beds basketballs kentucky and indiana uh poor coach sean woods was saying man this is a football state and i said i guess so you come from indiana and kentucky <laughs> born in yeah. indiana and played in kentucky so right. of course you're going to think that but where do you look at where is a hotbed for volleyball players well you know basically all over so i love texas um and i've recruited all over texas i also um 
recruit in Arizona. I go as far east as like Florida. Um, I really want to get to California and get some kids out of there. We've got a lot of kids riding us and we just, I'm looking for the right kid to spark my interest um, in film. So I, it makes me want to go out there and visit. Right. What about international players? Is there a good plethora of international players that, that, that are good in volleyball? There are. I, it's just been very hard for me to get them in school. So they have the skill set, but academically, I just haven't found that one. Mm -hmm. um, right now, I am actually talking to some kids, um, international kids, but they have come from uh, junior colleges. So they're ready to graduate and then just transfer over. That's right. That's what I was going to ask you. A lot of junior college transfers. You get a lot of that or, you know? In the past, I've gotten a lot of them. Um, at this point, we're just kind of, I love, I'm a junior college product, okay? So I love to get junior college, but I also love the fact of being able to train kids from their freshman year to their senior year. To see them develop, um, it really, I, I love that. Right. To see them develop on the court, in the classroom, and socially. How many players can you have on your team total? Um, I've had as many as 18, but as far as scholarship players, it's 12. 12 players? Mm -hmm. Would you like anything to get better as far as volleyball from the NCAA that you would like better to help you out on your, on your side? As far as rules or just Every, skill set? Yeah, everything. Rules and also whether it is, uh, you know, and I know uh, recruiting is strict and what have you. You've got certain times you can talk to them, certain times you can't. They've changed the recruiting calendar. Um, but for me, I don't rock the boat a whole lot. I just, I don't deal with problems, I deal with solutions. So if you say this is what we're doing, I'm gonna find a solution to how I can perfect it and make it good for us, for, for me and, and our program. And I, you know, and I was talking to Coach Banks earlier about this, it's such a family-like atmosphere at Southern University. Yeah. Uh, I saw a lot of coaches at the volleyball uh, match with Prairie View when I went, but I also see you on just about every event. I even met you in Houston, <laughs> bought her a drink in Houston, by the way. And uh, I mean, so that, I mean, you've gone to just about everything. I know you were in the Bayou Classic and all that stuff. Well, you know, my son plays for the other team, so it's kind of like a win-win for me going to the Bayou Classic. Um, but it's, I like the support. I like the support of the coaches and their programs coming to our matches. Right. And so I like to give that support to the coaches as well. So if they need our hand, if they need us at their matches to do something, then, you know, I'll volunteer our team to do it. So you have a son plays at Grambling? Yeah. See, I didn't know that. But, yeah. but, no, but that adds on to it. It's just, it keeps adding on. It's amazing how much that adds on. I've seen it. I, I've not seen another rivalry like this. It's always adding on that. Either a cousin and a cousin goes, one cousin goes to Grambling, one cousin goes to Southern. Now that, that adds on to it where you've got a son playing for Grambling State. Yeah, it's just, it's weird because in the recruiting process for him, he was undersized, he was small, and he just didn't have what it took. And he went over there and after he signed, he just kind of got big. He got tall and he got wide. That's what happens. Yeah. That's what happens. Because I had a, 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 a cousin of mine came down to the Doug Williams camp years ago when Doug Williams was out of coaching and just he left Grambling and it was over in Tampa, I believe. And uh, my cousin from San Francisco Bay Area couldn't believe how big the players were here, muscular. And Doug Williams said it's protein we get. Mm -hmm. It's the protein. Red beans and rice, but everybody laughed about it, but he said, no, I'm serious. Yeah. It's the protein these athletes get. We ha I, there was a tight end, and I played tight end in high school. There was a tight end that was six foot three, and I'm like, oh my goodness, yeah. you play for the Saints? He said, no, I'm a sophomore in high school. I'm like, oh. <laughs> but he went from probably six four, two thirty, to six seven, three hundred. Wow. Your son? Yeah. What position he plays? Left tackle. Wow. Does he have a future maybe in the next level? Well, we'll see. Yeah. yeah right Is now? mom competitive? Very. Because I see, I see you on that volleyball. I see you on that volleyball, yeah. but I'm in mean, competitive watching your son. Very much. I can see that. I can see that. So, what do you do during the off season now uh, for volleyball this year? Because you've got a long way, long season now. We do. We are going to do a lot of indiv individual training, a lot of conditioning, and just get our kids to the point where they are never going to get it wrong. Right, and that's the thing to do. It's always it's a continuous job over and over again. Whether it's recruiting or whether it's keeping the kids in yeah. class whether it's keeping the kids working and stuff like that. Yeah. 
Coach Vanessa Jacob, you're one of the best. Thank you. We love you to it. death. Always got a smile on her face. I've never <laughs> seen it. Now, I'm sure the players have something different to say about that, but she's always got a beautiful smile on her face. We love her to death. She's one of the big, big people here at Southern University. All right, we'll be back with more. It's the Overtime Series with Athletic Director Roman Banks, a closer look at Jaguar Athletics. I'm Chris Powers, and we'll continue right here from Scoreboards Restaurant right here on Pelican Sports TV. The birth of legends are storied in this conference. We must never forget our rich history. We now turn our gaze to the future. The new legends will emerge. New heroes to arise. The Southwestern Athletic Conference. Be our history. At Roadrunner Towing, we love our God, our children, our nation, and yes, our sports. So, let's play ball. Score big when you need to tow, either in East Baton Rouge or West Baton Rouge. Because at Roadrunner Towing, we don't want an arm and a leg, we just want your toes. Legendary Import Group, exceptional service and a rare collection, you'll discover the only distinctive auto for the legend in you. We, we are legendary. legendary. I am legendary. I'm team legendary. I am legendary. I am legendary. Now that's legendary. Stop by Legendary Import Group today where our team is honored to serve you. We are legendary. Legendary Import Group, the only place for legendary care. The smart Baton Rouge business traveler travels out of Baton Rouge. Why? It's about not having to wake up hours early, fight traffic, and stand in long lines. It's also about BTR being closer, more convenient, with non-stops and short hops to anywhere your business takes you. It's smart. So for your business, if it's about being one step ahead and not dead on your feet, then it's about time you flew BTR. Baton Rouge Metro Airport. It's about time. Imagine a day without music. You go downtown, you can find some music. You come uptown, you can find some music. Monday night, they got music. Every night of the week, there's music somewhere. Baton Rouge is a place where it's easy to make friends, it's easy to hear some music, and it's easy to come back. We got the music, we got the food, and we got good people. So with that combination, you can't lose. Right? Yeah, I've come to lose and I All right, welcome back, everybody, as it's the Overtime Series with Athletic Director Roman Banks to close a look at Jaguar Athletics right here from School Board's Restaurant uh, on Corsi Boulevard, right smack in the middle, I call it, between Airline Highway and Short Forest Boulevard. If you're coming from Airline Highway, you're going to take a left, make that turn, come on in. And if you're coming from Sherwood, you're going to take a right and make your way in here, uh, obviously, at the School Board's Restaurant. Just look for the scoreboards. Always great, uh, great drink specials, great food here. We'll have bread pudding, the overtime series bread pudding, by the way. And then Coach Banks has, uh, has owned that. Yeah, he's owned it. Like he cooked it himself? Yeah. But uh, so we've got a lot of stuff going on right here. Coming to invite you to have some good food and what have you. We've got Coach Derek Price. Everybody calls you Coach. Everybody. You how are, you doing? Great, great, my man. And how long have you been associated with Southern as a player, coach, and uh, equipment. equipment manager? Going on 42 years. 42 years, 42. and you got another year to go, right? I got another year to go. Miss Denise keeps telling me I'm not going. Nope, uh, nobody wants you to go. <laughs> nobody wants you to go. You've been so, 
so big at Southern University, and, and a lot of people don't understand. But how about it? You know, you played this game. You played at Southern University. When you see a Harold Carmichael make the Hall of Fame, another Hall of Fame like that in this way, isn't that awesome? It's unbelievable. It gives you chills. Yeah, I mean that guy. And, and when you meet the guy, he has a chance to be a jerk. Uh, everybody knows him. I mean, all the years he played at Philadelphia, he could be a jerk if he wants, but he's not. He's a very humble guy. Yeah. He really is, yeah, and it, it, it's just exciting to see that happen. Yeah, no question yeah. about that. All right, now let's talk about, obviously, uh, your equipment manager and all that stuff. You're responsible for getting all the uh, uniforms and what have you going. Not only that, too, and we're going to tell you another thing that he does it, that I think he's unbelievable in, but what is it, when, when it comes to the uniforms, what is that decision come down to with Under Armour, of course, who's been a big partner now with Southern University for a couple of years? Well, first of all, I take my hat off to Under Armour. They're one of the best groups I've ever worked with. The next thing that, that the key is, you want to stay in tradition with the university, but you also want to get keep in style with what's going on at that right. time. So you, you got to kind of blend them together. I saw a picture the other day of a blue, the dark blue Southern helmet. Yes. And that obviously now we're in the white helmet. When we did that, and back then it was the gold helmets back in the old days even before that. Yeah, well, you know, a lot of people don't remember, but before the gold helmet, it was Columbia Blue helmet. Oh, really? I played in Columbia Blue helmet. Wow. Yeah. Then we went to the gold, and then we had two years where we went to that Alcorn gold. I don't know if you remember well, that. No, actually, I don't. I don't think I do. Yeah, we, we tried the Alcorn gold when Coach Kassam came in. Yeah. And then we went to, back to the gold, regular gold, and then we went to the Royal Blue before we switched over to the white. Yeah, and that was Coach Pete Richardson, that Royal Blue. Yes. Yeah, and he, he just had that, and the white one. What do you prefer? I actually prefer the traditional gold. The traditional gold, like when the... Uh, when the uh, when Green was, Bay gold. Okay, yeah, yes. yeah, I like that too. Yes. Yeah. I like that too. What has been the easiest coach to work with? <laughs> hmm. <laughs> actually, the easiest one to work with didn't stay long, stunk. Stump Mitchell, Stump Mitchell. Was, he was the, probably the easiest one to work for. And you can always tell Stump on the sideline because he's got that big white beard that comes out to about <laughs> right there. And next to Stump probably would be Coach Odom. Coach Odom? Yes. And you know, and, and his job is very difficult too. You don't understand that. His job is difficult. One of the games, I'll, I'll never forget, one of the games that we did that the paint from the field was on the jerseys. And it's like, Coach, it's going to be hard to get that off. Well, you, you football know, jersey. Yeah, that happens. But you got to have a few tricks up your sleeve to know once you and get you back been, how to how to yeah. what you get mixed up to get them out without messing the uniform up. And you've been there a long time. <laughs> I mean, is there any time that you you've absolutely messed up and it's like, wait a minute, that uniform is pink? No, I haven't got there yet. <laughs> no, I still got a job, so I haven't got there yet. <laughs> <laughs> what has been the worst that you have been the most nervous about when it gets to the players? getting their uniforms at all times. Maybe some loss, ripped, or what have you. How does that work? We went to Indianapolis one year, played in Circle City. That's right. And we had just ordered a new set of uniforms. And when we got ready to leave, the uniforms weren't there. Ooh. Yeah. So I talked with the people. OK, we're going to ship them to the hotel in, in Indianapolis. We got there, got, got the box out the hotel, went to the locker room. First time seeing them now. We were at the stadium. Opened them up, and some of the numbers were wrong. Oh! They had one number on the front, and it was reversed on the back. Oh my goodness! And I was on the sideline that day for RCA uh, Dolan. That's yes. where we played it. I was on the sideline for that day. All right. Now, also another thing, what this guy does, and I mean award-winning communications, making sure that the, the the coaches have their headsets right, what have you. He's the one that's put. If you come to the game early, it's like a big box. He's pushing with a big antenna on the top. And then he's got to go up in the uh, stadium and make sure all of the communications are working for all the coaches. This guy's so good at doing this, he did it for the National Football League in every Super Bowl. How many Super Bowls? Not every. 20. Yeah, just, I mean, when did you stop? I stopped about four years ago. Four years ago. So I'm watching a Super Bowl one day, and I'm like, wait, is that Coach Price? And I had no idea you did that. How did you get that gig? Um, back when I was coaching... And uh, Coach Otis Watson at the time mm -hmm. put me in charge of uh, purchasing a new headset system. And I 
went through a company called Telex. Right. And they were doing the NFL at the time. And so I got to know those people pretty good. And we talked and we talked. And one day they called me and said, man, you want to work the Super Bowl? I said, who doesn't? <laughs> <laughs> and from that point on, every year, Telex and NFL would call me. And he was on the sideline. I saw you standing next to a coach on the sideline. I forgot which one it was. John Super Bowl. John Gruden? John Gruden. Man, and it was unbelievable, man. I said, this guy, I cannot believe that, but this guy's at the Super Bowl and never invited me. I'd have, I'd have been there holding something. <laughs> but also, too, a lot of people don't understand, you got to get the right, when you're at that game, you got to get the right frequency. Because yes. sometimes if you don't, the you can't get the communications down there. Oh, and it'll go out in a minute. And trust me, those coaches, once it goes oh, yeah. out, they lose it. What's been the worst situation stadium in the SWAC that you've had to deal with? In the SWAC, Mississippi Valley, hands down. Yeah, I, I, so that's one for me too. <laughs> Alabama State, I don't know if you, that new stadium, yes. they had communications problems. We kept blinking off the air on and off. Well, the, big, the biggest problem for me at Alabama State, it's a brand new stadium and they have no lines. That's right. They have no communication lines, so we actually have to physically run a line from the press box around the field to the, to the sideline. And we're going back there this football season. Remind me about it, okay? <laughs> <laughs> Coach, thank you everything you do. Coach Price, Thanks you a lot. do a great job, my man. Appreciate it. Awesome deal. Coach Derek Price right here from Southern University. Man is always at work. All right, when we come back, we'll have Coach uh, Banks back up here, the Athletic Director of Southern University, as we take a little closer look at Jaguar Athletics right after this on Pelican Sports TV. Need to see a doctor fast? Lake Express Check-In lets you get in line, online. Visit ololrmc.com slash express to choose an estimated treatment time at one of our emergency room, urgent care, or physician office locations. A service of Our Lady of the Lake. Legendary Import Group. Distinguished service and detailed attention. You'll discover the only distinctive auto for the legend in you. Stop by 10660 Corsi Boulevard or phone 225-960-1191. It's game day. A day that should be spent in the living room, not the kitchen. So next game, you just worry about the score. Because we've got the food covered. With hand battered, cooked to order, always fresh, never ever frozen chicken fingers. Craveable cane sauce, crispy crinkle cut fries, and jugs of freshly made tea and lemonade. Raisin Cane's chicken fingers, one love. Official chicken of Southern University. Woo! <laughs> Are you interested in a college major with numerous career opportunities? Look no further than the Southern University College of Agricultural, Family, and Consumer Sciences. Agriculture is more than working on a farm. Our students are gaining hands-on experience and conducting cutting-edge research in the areas of agricultural sciences, family and consumer sciences, and urban forestry and natural resources. Our students also participate in internships and travel to national conferences. Our student organizations include students from diverse backgrounds with close bonds. These organizations provide our students with leadership and personal development skills needed to help them gain employment with top industry leaders. If you're not sure what you want to major in at Southern University, I encourage you to try AG. For more information about the College of Agricultural, Family, and Consumer Sciences, visit our website at www.suagcenter.com or call 225-771-2242. of hardworking Americans and businesses will always be the lifeline of this great country. As a business owner, you understand the importance of your reputation. In times of uncertainty, you need a real lawyer who's serious about protecting you and your business. You need a problem solver. You need the law firm of Clayton and Fouget. Tony Clayton is a proven trial lawyer. He'll defend you and your business to the fullest extent of the law. Protect your investment and call the law firm of Clayton and Fouget today. 
Our Lady of the Lake is pleased to have so many Southern University graduates as part of our growing healthcare family. They are difference makers, caring for patients, leading teams and serving our neighbors, a tradition of excellence, a commitment to service, and a love for our community. Our Lady of the Lake and Southern University, together, a winning team. What's the most important aspect of event hosting? Location. This is something the Bell knew from day one. That's why we're located in downtown Baton Rouge, across from the convention center, close to LSU, and right by the river. So with a friendly staff, award-winning cuisine, and a massive conference center of 10 rooms and 24,000 square feet capable of fitting more than 2,000 guests, what we offer is just as important as where we are. All right, welcome back, everybody, right here at Silvertime Series with Athletic Director Roman Banks. A closer look at Jaguar Athletics. We're right here at School Board's Restaurant. Come get some delicious food right here. Before we get to our uh, Ask the Athletic Director a question, let's find out what's happening in Southern Sports with our next seven. On the road to face UAPB on Saturday, January 18th at 5 p.m. in Pine Bluff, Arkansas. Then Monday, January 20th at 5.30 in Indiana, Mississippi. Men's basketball will be on the road to face UAPB on Saturday, January 18th at 7.30 in Pine Bluff, Arkansas. Then again on Monday, January 20th at 7.30 at Antimini, Mississippi. Men's and women's track and field will be in Houston, Texas for the Leonard Hilton Memorial Invitational. And bowling will be competing in the SWAC West Tournament Friday, January 17th through Sunday, January 19th. And that's what's happening at Southern University Sports. For more information, go to GoJagSports.com. That's GoJagSports.com. And uh, get all the information that you need at GoJagSports.com. And also get information, too, about the uh, Taste of Jaguar. Taste of Jag, that's Taste, going to be coming up. Taste of Jag coming up. Um, you know, all these events about to start coming up here pretty soon. We got the Jagathon coming yep. up. And, uh, you know, that's why I asked everyone to kind of watch all social media and also uh, GoJagSports.com so they can know what we, what we have going on in athletics. And um, obviously... Uh, the Taste of Jag is a signature hit for us where they Ooh. get a chance to come in and taste all the good food. I had such a fun We have time. live music and a hangout and, uh, you know, we're appealing to people to come out and have a good time. We, we call ourselves in 2020 going to another level, so we call calling everything double overtime. Yeah. Now. And so uh, we're excited about what's going to happen this year for double overtime. And then we'll be going forward getting ready for uh, the scrabbagans and different opportunities as we go toward football season. But the uh, Jagathon obviously is, is a big fundraiser for us that we would start uh, uh, advertising the Jagathon to give all our fans, uh, all our support a chance to donate online or come in on person. This will be our third annual, fourth annual, third annual. And uh, last year we raised about uh, $40,000. And so my goal is, a uh, bold goal, to get to $100,000 where we can do some renovations and. We can help some of our Olympic sports, and we can do a lot of other things that's needed on that campus. Uh, like last year, we sunk, uh, we put probably about sixty thousand dollars into that, into uh, softball itself. Wow! And we know that's just the first phase, and so we need to continue to put restrooms and concession stands around that place, and we need to put locker rooms and see more gym for for women's uh, volleyball and beautify that place and make sure they have home court advantage. And then we need to also, uh, uh, with soccer, uh, we need to make sure that we are making that a true home field. We ha still have to add the scoreboards. The field is nice, yep. but those uh, scoreboards, uh, we added extra seating already. We were able to bring that in. And uh, we have to provide a locker room for them. Uh, we're required by uh, the NCAA Title IX improvements to make sure that we're doing those type of things. And so we come from a long ways in a short period of time, but we still have a lot of work to do. Along with continuing to make sure that uh, you know we can dress out Mumford Stadium and, and give football what they need and men and women basketball. Uh, if you walked in there, I hope people noticed the new goals. Yep. And uh, and obviously, I don't think there have been goals in over 15 years in that arena. And uh, and so that floor uh, was there when I was assistant basketball coach. And so that's been 20 plus years. 
And so uh, it's time that we go in and get a new court and, and uh, you know, the safety and welfare of our student athletes are important. So it's a lot, we need to go in and, and uh, revitalize a lot of our facilities and make it a, a safe environment, but also make it a hostile environment yeah. uh, when, when other teams come in. That's exactly right. So now I've asked my question to you. We've got a few more, but right now, Tiana. Uh, from the Sports Information Department has a uh, question to ask. She's got a guest right there to ask a question to the AD. I do, Chris. We have Mr. Leonard here. He is a... Floyd. Floyd. Oh, Lord Jesus. Right. He is a Southern alum, and he comes to all the games. He is a season ticket book holder as well. Yes, he is. Yes, Coach. What can we expect from the Southern University Athletics for 2020? The short answer, championships. <laughs> no, 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 no. Uh, you know... Uh, you know, more than anything, is, is uh, I think I like turn it around and say my expectations. And, um, and so there's a call to, to all our fans and supporters. You know, I want to make sure that we build up our season ticket holder base so in return we can invest those type of dollars into our student athletes. We have things going on like the S Club, Jags Unlimited Club. These are different organizations that as a fan, if you're, if you're a former athlete, you can invest into the S Club that's for athletes and the Jags Unlimited Club or just for supporters. And so we have a lot of ways where you can get free ticket, free parking, uh, free passes to different events if you invest in those things. And so I'm not asking for you just to give us nothing for free, but I'm asking everybody to invest into season books, invest into those clubs and return. That will help me go out and uh, do my job a little better as it providing for the 15 uh, sports that we have and also uh, the auxiliary uh, staffs and all the other things that we have going on. I like to, you know, be able to come in and dress Mumford Stadium out a whole different way. I like it when you come over that hump that you see uh, the land of Jaguar Athletics, but we cannot do that uh, without funds. We try and invest $30,000 into uh, putting new uh, on the baseball field uh, uh, new nets uh, that we're working on trying to raise those dollars. And so those dollars don't come to us. Uh, you know, what the state give us, you know, we're stretched in with those dollars. We're not complaining about it. But those are dollars that, uh, you know, we have to go out and raise in corporate sponsorships. We have called them for them to come in and donate to Southern University so we can move forward. And uh, so that question is, uh, my expectations is that all of us come together and every little bit helps and then I can go out and be more effective as it relates to trying to build winning facilities, uh, uh, championship teams, and making sure our student athletes graduate at a high rate. No question about that. Good question. Thank you for that big time. All right, now speaking of that, February 1st, the t season tickets for football start, and we've got such a great schedule coming for Southern University 5, and coaching begins on September 12th with the Pete Richardson Classic. Florida A&M Rattlers. Is that going to be a big time rivalry game at A.W. Mumford Stadium right here in Baton Rouge? You know, uh, that is a game that I'm very excited about. Bringing this rivalry back, and, and by the way, uh, 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 our depth AD, Traven Scott, right now is negotiating with them because I want to carry this another, sign another uh, four year deal with them so we can make sure that we're going to be playing them for a period of time and we're close to doing that. Uh, but you know, that old rivalry is back. I said when I uh, took over this job is that we need to be able to bring historical back colleges games back that's going to be effective. Yeah. And obviously I think that this game with them coming back probably perhaps can break all the attendance records we have had in a long period of time. And we're going to put ancillary events around those games and, uh, and we're excited about uh, this schedule. Uh, you know, we haven't had five home games in, in, in a period of time. Uh, but I tell you every time I shake a hand that I listen and, uh, and, I, add, and I challenge the, the nation back to come out and support. So when you come out and support, that makes me go out and that I can do my job a little bit more better. But it's going to be real important that you come out and support these games. Because if we don't come out and support these games, then I don't have the ability when you start talking about budgeting, budgeting I won't have the ability to say, okay, we did well, right. and it, now I have to go replace these games with a, with a game guarantee, and that's what I don't want to do. So this year is going to be important. The numbers are going to be important. I feel like we have a, a schedule that's, that's very hyped up that all fans can enjoy. We're going to put the ancillary events around it. The block party is going to be fun. The end zone 
uh, party is going to be fun down there on the scoreboard, Jaguar Den. And uh, I'm excited about we have had a lot of time to try to change some things for our fans and continue to get better. No so uh, I think it's going to be an exciting, exciting no season. No doubt, because after you got Florida State, uh, Florida A&M, you got Jackson State. That's going to be there on September 26th. You've got Alcorn State and the Braves homecoming on October 31st, and then UAPB as well on November the 14th. So lots of great things going on. Now, once again, you can get your tickets uh, either at the ticket office or you can get them at uh, Ticketmaster. $85 to $175 for five football games. That's an unbelievable deal. February 1st, they go on sale. Now, if you go to the ticket office, you can uh, go by and get that. They're open from 9 a.m. until 4 p.m. You call 771-3171. And there's been a lot of people that have talked about uh, there's been too many fees with uh, with uh, with the um, with Ticketmaster. Ticketmaster, and that's not the case. Right, that's not the case. We talked to Ticketmaster, and so I think you know Ticketmaster. I don't want to think that it's not a fee, but you actually say pay that same dollar extra ticket that we have to pay for Ticketmaster uh, if you come to the to the box office. And so let's erase that myth that we do have online sales. Mm -hmm. Our online sales go through Ticketmaster. So wherever you are out of state. You can go to Ticketmaster and uh, contact Ticketmaster, go online, and you can get our season books. This is the first time that we ever in Southern University history have ever started season book tickets this early. Yeah. But once again, that's talking to the fans, listening to the fans, and uh, trying to provide the service that, that they're asking for. And so, but at the end of the day, uh, I need them to make sure they take advantage of the services. We're going to continue to invest in this. And, and, and give them the service that they're asking for. So I look for our number of season tickets to go up just because that we invest into this service. You know, February, we usually just start selling tickets to January, I mean to June almost. And so now we have this opportunity that everybody can take advantage of it. We already talked about that our season tickets are uh, at the least $60 for a season in the end zone. And so, uh, you know, we're trying to uh, erase all the excuses and we're trying to be better. No question about that. Speaking of better, how about some delicious turkey wings and some rice and gravy? That looks this delicious. Seem, this seemed to be the hit now, they turkey wings. Some of those things you get right here at the Where's my overtime series? Bread that, pudding. I know I haven't been here in a while, but it's yeah, time to crank that back up. Next week. See you later. <laughs> <laughs> Go Jags!